Hello everyone, welcome back to the Big Dunge Podcast, episode 9 of our Sports World Weekly. Today we're discussing the NFL, NBA, MLB, and fighting, like I usually do every week. Didn't post a podcast last week because didn't have time, unfortunately, but had time today. And plus, you know, it's nice to build up a lot of more sports news uh, over the past couple days anyway. Uh, you know, gave me a whole extra week to make this podcast even more uh, enjoyable. I am recording for YouTube, so if you're watching on YouTube, hello, subscribe to my channel, help me get to 6,000 subscribers, and then I'm also recording for Anchor and Spotify. I do this every time, always want to mention it also, just because, you know, I have my earpiece in, obviously going to Anchor, and then obviously the phone is recording to post on YouTube. Right now I actually have the Phillies versus Washington Nationals on. We were up 5 nothing. And then somehow, we had a terrible fifth inning. Vince Velasquez gets pulled, and then now it's tied up, 5-5. Five five. Bryce Harper hit a home run. Uh, I can't think of the name now who also hit a home run, and then also had a, a base hit. forget that name already. Uh, but I think that was his first home run since 2018, uh, whoever hit that. Let me go put it on the game cast right now, because I'm actually mad I forgot the name already. Jen Kowski, that's who it was. Hit a home run. He's actually two for two right now. But, uh, yeah, bad pitching from Velasquez. He's not usually like that. But, uh, you know, now it's tied up 5-5, bottom of the fifth inning. Anyway, let's get into it. Today, the main topics, though, we are going to be talking about the 76ers, my 76ers losing. I'm going to be discussing Ben Simmons. Then I'm going to talk about, which I'm actually going to start off with, is the best NFL free agents. Then I'll also talk about You know, the MLB bans with pitching substances. And then also the fighting. Uh, You know, I like to discuss fighting for a little bit over the past couple weeks. Uh, Every podcast I do, I like to discuss the fighting. Uh, Not much going on this past weekend or this weekend, I'm pretty sure. But I know two weekends ago, there were some pretty good, decent uh, UFC fights. But there was also a lot of entertainment garbage that I'll talk about. But uh, let's get into it. NFL don't have much, not much news. I mean... Obviously, there were some big news over the past couple of days. Uh, you know, a lot of people getting arrested, apparently. I don't know how. Uh, but yeah, not any big free agent signings or anything like that. So that's why I decided to talk about, actually, the best available free agents right now. So I'm actually on NFLTradeRumors.com. It has top 100 available 2021 NFL free agents. This was posted on June 20th. So this is obviously uh, very recent. Number one, they have Morgan Moses. Okay, I heard of the name, but I'm not too familiar with how he is playing. Number two, we have Steven Nelson, played for Pittsburgh, great cornerback, but I thought he signed already. I could have been wrong. I, I thought he signed uh, with the team. I know he didn't sign back with the Steelers, unfortunately. I don't think he will. It's not optimate that, you know, he will. Let's look up Steven Nelson real quick, actually. Yeah, he's a free agent. I mean, I don't know. I thought he would. I thought he was signed with a team. I know that he wants a lot of money. That's why I'm saying he's not going to stay with, uh, what's it called? He's not going to sign up with, sign up. He's not going to sign with the Steelers. But yeah, huge loss for our secondary though, That he, if he goes. And then Mitchell Swartz from Kansas City. He was a first round pick, first pick overall for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, started to go a little downhill and, you know. But yeah, pretty decent lineman. I'll have to have him on the Steelers though. Uh, who else? Let me name some big names. All right, Russell Okung, a pretty good offensive tackle, played for Carolina. I'm pretty sure he was on the Seahawks, too. I think he won a ring with them. But, uh, you know, he was a pretty good, decent uh, lineman. And then Melvin Ingram, he was actually pretty good on the Chargers. Uh, I don't know what happened to him, though. So that's a pretty big name. And then Richard Sherman, that's probably one of the biggest on this list. He's ranked at number seven. But, yeah, still hasn't signed yet. A lot of people are saying the Titans. I think that could be good, a good uh, veteran leadership on that defense. Uh, and obviously the Titans, they have a great offense coming in, but they got to work on the defense. I think, you know, adding a veteran like Richard Sherman, uh, you know, a lot of playoff experience, a lot of Super Bowl experience, I think uh, that would be a great addition for them. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, obviously in the news. I'm a, you know, I was a big fan of Le'Veon Bell. Not anymore, of course, with just how he disrespects everybody. But prime Le'Veon Bell, my favorite running back of all time. Uh, unfortunately, he's uh, going downhill drastically. Definitely not going to resign with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's going to be hard to find a team, you know, from the sign with in general. 
Another big name is Geno Atkins, a multiple Pro Bowler. I think he's like eight-time Pro Bowler, actually. As a Steeler fan, I know the name Geno Atkins. It pops up a lot watching him, uh, you know, play the Steelers. So that's definitely a big, uh, big name. 33 years old, though, so I can see why, uh, you know, there might be some doubt. Then Todd Gurley. Obviously, he had, you know, injury problems, but people forget he was one of the best running backs in the league at one point. Uh, 27 years old. Had a decent year with Atlanta after coming back from injuries. Uh, I think he could be a good... Uh, you know, backup running back for any team in the league right now. And then I'll name a couple more. Larry Fitzgerald, 38. People don't know if he's going to retire or not. I think he will sign one more year. This could be his last year. In my opinion, I think he will. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the Cardinals wide receiver, they have a lot. They have a good, uh, good amount of depth there. They have AJ Green, which I'm actually, uh, I actually forgot they signed him, but you know, I like A.J. Green, you know, even as a Steelers fan, watch him on the Bengals. A.J. Green's a seven-time Pro Bowler, so I think that's a great addition. And then, obviously, John DeAndre Hopkins, a top three wide receiver in the league. And they have that rookie wide receiver that they drafted. I forget his name, but he was squatting like 400-some pounds. He's an animal. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this could be Larry's last season, I think. But I think he will sign back with the Arizona Cardinals. I don't think he's going to sign with anyone else. Uh, that'd be stupid. I mean, he's 38 years old. Maybe sign somebody to ring chase, but I think he's too loyal for that. I don't think he's going to retire. This might be his last year. But let's do one more. We are at 40 right now, but I have to subscribe. Oh, no, I don't. Okay, thankfully. I thought I had to subscribe. Uh, let's see. Josh Gordon, obviously. Got too many chances. I don't know what's going to happen with him. Uh, but Pittsburgh-wise, though, Avery Williamson. Not too bad. It was a good backup linebacker for us. Uh, but yeah. Just looking at names, popular names I'm seeing right now that I already know, like D.D. Westbrook. Crazy how he was a, a Heisman finalist when he was in college. And then Jesse James. I liked him on the Steelers. Uh, had decent, just didn't use him right. Had decent uh, ability. But uh, yeah, that is my opinion on the best free agents right now. Gave my thoughts. I think the best free agent available, though, if I was a team, if I had to pick one offensive player, it would probably be, let's see, if I had to pick one offensive player uh, to sign, it would probably be a lineman, either if it was Moses or a Kung or Schwartz, probably a lineman, uh, just the way they're ranked and, you know, they're the best available. Defense, Richard Sherman or Geno Atkins, but, you know, I'm leaning towards Richard Sherman more. But, uh, yeah, that's who I would pick if I was a GM of the NFL team. Anyway, that is the NFL. Let's move on. NBA, big news, big games. I'm disappointed as a 76ers fan. I live streamed the game on Sunday against the Hawks. Let me give you my opinions real quick. I mean, I give my opinions a lot during the live stream, but let me tell you. The 76ers were a better team than the Hawks. Uh, they didn't play better than them, no, but they had a better roster. They're just a better overall team. Just made too many mistakes. Like I said, they didn't play better than the Hawks, but they are a better team in my opinion. Uh, obviously, Ben Simmons, which I'll get into, played absolutely terrible. Uh, all the focus was really on Joel Embiid, the whole series. Seth Curry was, you know, on and off. He was good when we needed him, but it wasn't that consistent like Joel Embiid. Uh, you know, the main focus was on Joel, and that was the problem. It wasn't like that during the year. You know, we had Ben Simmons create space, Tobias Harris scoring when we need it. Everybody scoring when we need it, giving, you know, relieving pressure off Embiid. But this whole pressure was on Embiid, and he wasn't even, like, fully healthy, too. So, obviously, that doesn't help. Uh, but, you know, let me get into Simmons, though. Six foot ten. You know, people said he was going to be the best, you know, one of the best point guards of all time. The next LeBron James, the next Magic Johnson. I mean, regular season, he plays great, okay? I love him during the regular season. One of the best defenders in the league. A great point guard. Doesn't shoot, which, you know, you could say, all right, he doesn't need to. And you could say that during the season. But in the playoffs, you got to shoot when it comes down to it. Can't hit free throws. Not being able to hit threes is one thing. But not being able to hit free throws, I mean, for getting paid that much, he's basically considered overrated. I mean, I, would, I used to deny the facts that, you know, he was overrated during the regular season. Because I didn't think he was. I think he was just like an average star uh, who was a really good defender. But the playoffs come. Not shooting when he when, when he has a chance. B 
being scared to go up at the rim, scared with mismatches. I mean, Trey Young, all right, his matchup. Come on, Trey Young is almost a foot smaller than him, and you know what I mean. He doesn't take advantage of that. So, I don't know. People are saying trade Simmons. I mean, I would say trade Simmons if we could get a good uh, player back. I'm not trying to get ripped off. I'm not trying to, you know, sell him for a draft pick. No, I want to. Tra- if we're going to trade Simmons, I want somebody good in return. But it's going to be hard because who wants Simmons? One, he has a large contract. And two, he's scared to score. I mean, he's a first team all defensive player. He was, you know, a defensive player runner up. So that's one thing. But he can't score when it comes down to it. And yeah, defense wins championships, but not just defense. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think a player like Damian Lillard, who are some rumors of getting, uh, he would be perfect for the Sixers. Somebody fast, somebody who could shoot, somebody who runs the offense well. Uh, you know, Ben Simmons could have been that guy. If only he just worked on, he doesn't even have to be three-pointers, just worked on mid-range and free throws. If he just add, he, I feel like he doesn't even want to do that. He's been in the league for like four years now. He doesn't even want to work on that. Like, come on now. That's what gets me mad. It's not the fact that like, you know, he sucks. All right, it's not that. All right. Obviously, people got to practice. He doesn't want to practice. That's the thing. And yeah, it's good to go into the rim all the time during the regular season, which he does, averaging like 15 points uh, a game during the regular season. But the playoffs comes. You saw that one highlight. I don't know if you guys did. He was wide open underneath the basket. He passed it. I mean, come on now. He's six foot ten. All right, that's like the height of a NBA center, and he can't can't score like that. I mean, come on. That's what gets me mad. So I have a Ben Simmons jersey too. So like, actually, he's six foot eleven, not six foot ten. So yeah, six foot eleven, the height of an NBA center, and you know, playing soft, playing scared. But that's that. Sixers lose. Uh, sucks. I think the Hawks, though, are going to get destroyed by the Bucks. I mean, I say the, I thought the Hawks were going to get destroyed by the Sixers, but, I mean, they barely beat the Sixers. I don't know. I don't think it's going to look too good for them against the Bucks. But anyway, that's my thoughts. For Simmons, though, I don't know. We'll have to find who's right uh, for him. I'd say, you know, somebody like Damian Lillard, but I doubt uh, we get Damian Lillard for cheap. You know what I mean? But, uh... Yeah, guys, that is my thoughts on the 76ers. Now, the Nets lose, all right? A lot of doubt towards Kevin Durant. Saying he can't carry a team. The next game, he ends up putting up one of the best playoff performances of all time. Uh, I don't want to pull up the stats now because it's not available. It'll take too long. But he did have an amazing game. He had, like, close to 50 points, I think it was. Uh, but, yeah, absolutely insane game by him. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. I don't know when it was, though. It could have been Friday or Saturday. Yeah, 48 points. I don't know if this was the game, though, that he had. But, yeah, 48 points. I don't look enough. But had an absolutely amazing game against the Bucks, and started to basically carry with, obviously, Kyrie and uh, James Harden hurt. But if we looked at that team in the like the middle of the season, like, here's the lineup. And somebody just hit a home run. I don't know who it was for the Phillies. Andrew McCutcheon playing a great year. Grand slam. Okay. Okay, Andrew McCutcheon with the grand slam, bottom of the fifth inning, nine to five, the score is for the Phillies. That's pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, what am I on now? All right, the Nets, halfway through the season. Let's look at their roster, if healthy. Kyrie Irving, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin, LaMarcus Aldridge, and then uh, DeAndre Jordan. Obviously, that's six players. You could choose who you want on the bench. But, I mean, that's 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 an NBA championship team. I said, actually, I remember saying in the middle of the season, if the Nets are healthy, they are a championship team. No doubt about it. They weren't healthy. Obviously, they didn't win the championship or even make it to the Western, I'm sorry, the Eastern Conference Finals. But if the Nets were healthy, I think they would have been no doubt uh, NBA champs, but they weren't. Obviously, Aldridge retired. Uh, Kyrie Irving was out. Harden had hamstring injuries, but uh, you know we'll have to see for next year. I think the Nets are going to be number one of these next year, if healthy, if healthy. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts on the Nets. And then my predictions now on the Suns versus Clippers and then Bucks versus Hawks. I had to give my prediction. I think the Bucks are going to beat the Hawks uh, and go to the finals. But for the Suns versus Clippers, the Suns are actually leading Clippers 2-0. An absolutely insane buzzer beater yesterday on inbound play. I thought to myself, like that's something I tried doing on 2K. It never works, 
but uh, obviously it works in uh, in game, uh, in a real life game. But yeah, it was uh, DeAndre Ayton. I'm pretty sure it got, was got an inbound pass, alley oop, dunked it. Time runs out, they win. Uh, George Paul, George Paul, Paul George couldn't hit his free throws, so obviously that didn't help. People were calling him Pandemic P and all. Uh, you know, Paul George is a great player, but come playoffs, I mean, he has so many stories of him like choking in playoffs. I mean, so many buzzer beaters against him. So many just times where he misses shots when he needs to. Uh, almost hit a home run again on the Phillies. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so that's that's uh, Paul George in the Clippers situation. The Suns are winning 2 nothing. I think the Suns will uh, come away with it. Uh, I think the Clippers might, you know, come back a little, but I still think the Suns are going to win. And it'll be a Suns versus Bucks NBA Finals. Who would have thought that? I would have never thought that beginning of the season. I'm pretty sure you guys did too. Uh, Suns versus Bucks. I mean, listen, obviously that might not happen. But I'm just saying, like, that's a chance. I think that's what will happen. But, uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on the NBA. We're running through this podcast pretty smoothly. I know if you guys watched my last podcast or listened to my last podcast, you know, I'll start to, like, stutter around this time because, you know, I lose focus. I got to find a way, though, okay, to, like, take a break and just have music playing. I mean, it works good on, you know, if you're listening on my phone, on Anchor, through Anchor, but on my uh, on my phone when I'm recording, I don't want to just have, like, random, you know, Random silence, just a video of me. I gotta find a way to like put like you know I don't even know my profile picture or something. Have music playing while I take a little you know one or two minute break. But uh, yeah, these are many podcasts anyway, so they're not meant to be long. So I just guess I just gotta suck it up, be tough, and stop worrying about breaks. Anyway, let's go into the MLB. Like I said though, I'm watching the. All right, here I just got hit by a pitch right in the hip. Nationals pitcher uh, going downhill right now. But yeah, I'm watching the Phillies versus Nationals. Andrew McCutcheon just hit a grand slam a couple minutes ago. Uh, still only bottom of the fifth. Bad pitching by both teams, though, in this fifth inning. Velasquez going to get pulled. I think the Nationals pitcher is going to get pulled. Uh, but yeah, just gave up a grand slam and then hit a pitcher next. Hit, hit a batter next. Uh, you know, that's my thoughts on the Phillies. I mean, I'm going to see the Phillies actually next weekend on a Friday, July 2nd against the Padres. Hopefully that's a big, uh, big game. They have a lot of big names. Uh, Tatis, Machado, Snell, Darvish. So, you know, definitely cool. Hopefully I see everyone's healthy, of course. But obviously Phillies pull away with the win. When I do see Phillies, though, I saw two Philly games in my life. Or three. I saw three Phillies games in my life. They're actually 2-1 and one when I saw them. I saw them play the Pirates when I was like 10 years old. They won. Then I saw them play the Mets in Philadelphia. Both times, Pirates and Mets in Philadelphia. They beat the Mets, so it was 2 nothing, 2 0. And then I saw them play the Pirates two years ago in Pittsburgh, and they lost. But uh, yeah, so they're 2 and 1 when I go see them. Hopefully, it makes it 3 and 1 uh, next Friday. But some big news, though, over the past week is you know, the MLB banning pitching substances. Sub, substances. I couldn't uh, say that right. I guess I am stuttering, like I said. Nah, I just couldn't say that right. Anyway, uh, if you guys saw last night, Scherzer. Getting mad because obviously the Phillies manager Joe Girardi wanted to check him. I think that was a bit unnecessary. You know, I'm a Phillies fan, and I'll admit that's a bit unnecessary. Three times I think he got checked. I mean, come on now. I think that's a bit unnecessary. Uh, you know, a lot of players are getting mad because you know canceling or banning it mid-season. People are saying they're getting injured, and people are and the fans are like, "Well, you shouldn't have cheated." That's not the thing. They will be allowed substances and stuff like that. So for an MLB pitcher to just change the way that they you know, pitch and stuff, they're obviously going to get injured, all right? If I'm using something, I don't know, if I'm using pine tar on a ball or something, all right? I've been using that for years. They just suddenly ban it mid-season. All right, next time I pitch, I throw it without pine tar. I mean, I'm obviously going to get injured. Obviously, or maybe not injured, but I'm obviously going to play bad. I'm obviously not going to play as good as I used to because the ban happened mid-season. I didn't have enough time to prepare or switch to, uh, you know, throw the right way. So it's not really cheating if the MLB allows it. You get what I'm saying? Now, if the MLB they never allowed it and you were cheating, all right, well, then I don't care what happens to you. I mean, you shouldn't have cheated. But if they allowed it, then you can't get mad. I mean, it's not really cheating because they allowed it. There's no rules. That's my thoughts on it, though. Uh, don't know much about it, though. I just put the basics. And that's my opinions on it. But, yeah, that's MLB. Uh, like I said, 
I'm going to see the Phillies next Friday. I'm definitely excited, though, against the Padres. Padres are one of the best teams in the league, too. The Phillies are mediocre. I don't know where they're standing, though. Let's see where the, MLB, where the Phillies are standing. The MLB standings. Uh, let's see. The Red Sox up there. They're on and off every year. Astros leading. I mean, I hate the Astros with cheating, but, I mean, even without cheating, they're still winning. Uh, Phillies fall to third in the National League East. 34 and 36. They're behind the Mets and the Braves. I mean, this division is probably the worst division in baseball right now, actually, when you look at it. Yeah, they are. Uh, uh, but so, I mean, just like the NFC East in football. Uh, but anything could happen. Uh, you know, definitely got to beat the Mets when we face them next time. And the Braves. We always, I feel like the Braves and Phillies are just like a rival nowadays. Just because of how competitive the thing is that I'm watching now. High throw the first base, but Reese Hoskins was still out. That's the bottom of the fifth now for the Phillies. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the MLB. Now, let's move on to fighting. Not much news to wrap it up. Uh, you know, some big UFC fights over the past weekend. Not past weekend, two weekends ago. Let me see. Let me look it up because I forgot the fights already. I mean, I know, like, Nate Diaz was, like, on the undercard or something, which obviously is a bit rare. When was it? UFC 263, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, it was. All right, so Israel beats Vittori. I mean, definitely two great fighters. I mean, Israel is one of the best in the UFC right now. No one's stopping him. One of the best in the world. And then Marino versus Figueredo. Hope I said that right, but Marino was favored in this fight, and he won. And then Neat Diaz, all right, on the third card, or third on the card, facing somebody I didn't know, Leon Edwards. But Neat Diaz obviously loses. Uh, people are saying that he's just retire. I mean, if you hear the way he speaks, I mean, that that might be brain damage. I mean, I mean I'm not even gonna lie right now. Like the way he speaks, like it's just not not healthy, not right. You know, he's 21 and 13, taking a lot of L's recently. I think it's time for him to just wrap it up. I'm pretty sure he's just doing it for money now. Uh, but yeah, I think it's time for him to wrap it up. But like I said though, the card was pretty good. All right, the top three fights were really good. Uh, Israel though, he's unstoppable. Can't wait to see uh, McGregor come back, though. I see him. I'm uh, following him now on Instagram and all. Just the way he's training. I mean, he's prepared. More prepared than last time he fought four year. So, it's going to be a great matchup there. But uh, Bryce Hall, though, fighting over the weekend. I forgot how he fought. Some YouTuber. Uh, but he got destroyed. Got, like, I think TKO'd. Uh, bloody nose and everything. I mean, oh, yeah, Austin Broom got destroyed and all. I mean, I don't even care. It just, it's... It's just ruining the reputation of boxing. It's basically telling everybody that anybody can box. I mean, I mean that's been basically showing. I mean, some random TikToker, all right, Bryce Hall, since he has the money, he has a chance to hire, you know, trainers and be on a big platform like this. I mean, you see Paul Brothers, all right, they were rich. All you got to be is rich to hire trainers and then get their pro card and stuff like that. That sucks. I mean, somebody who wants to work as a boxer or doesn't have enough money, somebody who's actually trying to make a career out of boxing, they don't have the money, they can't hire good trainers, they can't go to a good gym, and what happens? You know, they miss out on these opportunities compared to somebody who's rich. They hire any trainer they want, and then they're in this platform. It just, it sucks. I mean, I guess I can't get mad. I mean, I guess you just got to put the, make more money or something. I don't know. But it just definitely uh, sucks that these celebrities have a higher chance of becoming pro boxers and getting this platform than somebody who, you know, doesn't have the money or, you know, is the working class who's just trying to work to try to, you know, grind and been putting in years of hard work to become a pro boxer. And then some celebrity gets their pro card, uh, pro license in six months and hires a trainer and everything like that. I, you know, it just sucks. That's why I don't like the celebrity stuff. Uh, I know, like, last week, too, or something, it was two weeks ago, Lamar Odom fought this random celebrity. Like, come on. That's not right. I mean, it's just a, it's just a shame. It's a, a joke, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Just a bad reputation for boxing. But, I mean, it's probably just going to get worse unless these real pro boxers start wanting to fight each other. Uh, Downtown Wilder versus Fury is coming up. I'm definitely excited for that. But not many big fights other than that, so... We'll have to see. And then obviously Pacquiao and Spence. But, you know, not many big fights though in the real pro boxing world. So I guess that's, you know, we got to worry about that first. Uh, but yeah, guys, today we talked about the best free agents available in the NFL. We talked about my Sixers losing. We talked about my predictions for the 
uh, NBA playoffs. And then I talked about some MLB. Philly's on right now. Top of the sixth. Nine to five. We're winning. Uh, you know, and then my thoughts on, you know, the MLB banning pitching substances and Scherzer getting mad uh, because of Joe Girardi, you know, asking to check him. And then some fighting news over the past uh, couple weeks. And then in the future. Love concluding, though, uh, my podcast with fighting. Just because I've been getting into it lately, past couple years, just watching fighting and boxing. and UFC, I haven't really been big into UFC until this past year. Um, McGregor, basically. Obviously, he doesn't fight much, but, you know, watching past fights of him, definitely uh, fun to see. But yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. If you're watching on YouTube, I ask that you leave a like, subscribe to my channel. And if you're watching on Spotify or Anchor, please follow me on there. I post a uh, podcast every Wednesday talk about sports all across the world i know in soccer also uh i'm obviously i racked a lot of soccer videos on my youtube but uh yeah i think the euro the europe i, I don't know i want to mispronounce that. i don't know why i forgot the name already but that's going on i've been tuning into that a little uh olympics are coming up so i'll definitely be covering that in the next couple uh months but uh yeah guys hopefully you enjoyed i'm out peace